Good morning, everyone. This is Kel Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you begin your day. Two people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries after a car went into the Keystone Mall over the weekend. Officials say the Battle Creek Fire Department was called to the scene just before noon on Saturday. Arriving crews found a black SUV partially in the building. The Battle Creek Fire Department posted these pictures of the scene to Facebook. In them, you can see heavy damage to the front of the building. Officials in Custer say firefighters were able to keep a car fire from spreading to nearby buildings over the weekend. The Custer County Sheriff says it happened just before 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon on Montgomery Street. Authorities shared these photos of the scene. In them, you can see two cars engulfed in flames. The Custer County Sheriff says it believes the fire was started as a man was using a chop saw on a disabled car. The Millet County Sheriff's Office says a day here caught fire overnight. Authorities say an investigation proved the fire was because of arson. The fire was reported at Brandy's Daycare in White River around 1 o'clock this morning. At the same time, a home invasion was reported about a block away. A 24-year-old man was arrested on charges of arson, burglary, ingestion of meth, simple assault on law enforcement, and attempted escape. We're learning more about a Lake County volunteer firefighter who died in the line of duty over the weekend. Last night, the South Dakota Firefighters Association identified him as 67-year-old Fred Fettler of Chester. Authorities say he was on the scene of a fire Saturday when he suffered a medical emergency. Responders performed life-saving measures at the scene, but he later died at the hospital in Madison. Memorial services are being planned in Chester. Meanwhile, a park in Rapid City was off limits to visitors on Sunday as firefighters lit a fire of their own. The Rapid City Fire Department closed Trinity Echo Prayer Park in downtown at 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon for a prescribed burn. This was the third burn held in the park since it opened in 2016. The management plan calls for a burn every two to three years to keep the park healthy. Now let's get a check of our forecast with meteorologist Scott Monk. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Dan. Good morning, everybody. We are looking at uh, warmer temperatures today as compared to what we had yesterday. Winds will be light in eastern Kettleland, though they will slowly start to pick up across western South Dakota. Expect afternoon highs today in the 50s and low 60s. And after you enjoy the afternoon, uh, be sure to tune in to the Kettleland Live Doppler Spring Special tonight. That, of course, airs after the 6 o'clock news right here on Kettleland television. In the meantime, Brian will have more details on the rest of your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Roads in Huron and Beetle County are being closed as the James River continues to rise. The traffic department in Huron closed Wable Drive and put up barricades. This will also affect recreational trails in the area. The Huron Police Department says driving around the barricades and failing to observe road closures is illegal. If you were out and about outside of urban areas across Kelloland last night, you may have been able to see a light show in the sky. A viewer sent us these photos of the northern lights in Tyler, Minnesota. Viewers also sent us a view of the northern lights from the Brandon and Wessington Springs areas. Meanwhile, Haley Miller posted these pictures of the northern lights in the Trent area to Facebook. In many of the photos, you can see the lights are showing multiple colors from green and purple to even pink. The northern lights, also known as Aurora Borealis, are more frequently seen in places closer to the North Pole, like Alaska and Canada. They're caused by a cloud of gas from the sun colliding with the Earth's magnetic field. If you have any pictures of the northern lights in your area, you can send them to youshare at kelloland.com. South Middle School in Rapid City has been under construction for about a year. Crews broke ground in March of 2022 on a $68 million renovation and expansion project. Right now, the school has about 600 students, but when the project is completed, the school will be able to have 800 students. We are walking into that school in August of 2024, so we have just a little over uh, a year left before we're walking into it. The Rapid City School District is using federal COVID aid to help pay for the project. At the end of January, we brought you the story of Brookings area two-year-old Sloan Murfield and her battle with a rare and fatal genetic disease. Just a couple weeks ago, Sloan and her family were granted a make-a-wish that included a trip to Florida. The family visited Disney World, SeaWorld, and more. You don't understand it until you're living the moment. Um, 
you know, growing up and being a part of the, the community and stuff, you hear about Make-A-Wish, you've seen Make-A-Wish. Being actually a family member that is granted a wish or having a family member that's granted a wish and being a part of that wish, it's, it's breathtaking. Sloan was diagnosed with a form of Batten disease. If you'd like to see the previous stories we've done with the Murfield family, they will be attached to this report on our website. That is a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather update today. After a chilly start to the morning, we will recover into the 50s today. A few spots close to 60. Southern South Dakota, primarily near Winter or Yankton, a little more favorable for that. But even Pierre, not far from 60. Aberdeen, a few degrees cooler, low 50s for highs here. We're expecting on radar tonight, there is a chance of a stray shower. We'll see where that uh, pops up here. Perhaps a filament on radar from here to uh, near Sioux Falls. Now that's a possibility, but if we do see that materialize, it doesn't look like it's sustainable for much of tomorrow. So we'll probably key on, on temperatures likely uh, back to the upper 50s, maybe a few low 60s. And then for your Wednesday, things are actually going to be trending a little warmer ahead of our next weather feature. Here's kind of the big picture pattern as you see the next couple of days in motion. There is a prevalent easterly wind, so that does tend to at least keep things capped as far as how warm we're going to get at least the next 48 hours. Our rain is to our southwest. That's good news for some of the folks that direction that are very dry yet. We can't forget that drought is still a big issue into Nebraska and Kansas. So any rain we can get, we're going to take it there. Now here, milder temperatures likely in much of Kelloland. Wednesday, 60s are likely. This might be some of the warmest weather we've had so far for Aberdeen, at least close to it. And then you see this cold front on Thursday starts to knock our temperature down. It'll bring some rain to parts of the region, and these rain chances may linger uh, to kick off uh, the weekend, at least into Friday. That's a colder pattern for us and certainly at least below average. We'll see how much below normal. That'll be uh, dependent upon how much precipitation we can uh, get going in the forecast. Numbers today, 56 degrees Sioux Falls, 58 in Mitchell, 60 in winter. Tonight we're down in the 30s for lows for most of us, so touch warmer, although Aberdeen not that way at 23. And then for tomorrow, we're back to the 50s across the board primarily because of the clouds being a little thicker. But the hope is we get into Wednesday and Thursday. We'll open the door to some 60s. The rain chances will return, especially into Friday. And then that's how we're going to kick off the weekend with cooler weather and, yeah, some rain. There may be, may be a mention of some snowflakes in Aberdeen. We're going to keep an eye on Friday. That wind will be colder out of the north. And we're still a few days out on that whole thing, how it plays out with that upper level low. So we'll just keep watching the forecast. We'll let you know if we have to trend that direction. Here also looking at a nice bounce back on Wednesday and Thursday, but it gets cut off pretty quickly. That front on Friday will have some power behind it, some wind out of the north, and we'll cut those temperatures at least 10 to 15 degrees, if not more. And Rapid City also will see a decline on Friday. But in the meantime, some showers off and on starting tomorrow through Thursday. Check out more details of the forecast online at Gebelland.com.